In this second part of the regression series where we are working on, I'll, I'll be looking into what we can do with the output and the results. We're going to look for the uh, the interpolation using IDW Krieging and Natural Neighbor when it comes to the output that we've generated and got from the geographically weighted regressions and the ordinary least square that we did in part one. Um, uh, there might be many reasons for why we want to interpolate the results to other kinds of areas. One of the more important one would be that the regressions now depict the uh, the outcome of the regression on the locations where they, they sit. But just in case we had a completely different set of variables where we want to pick up an estimated value in between these sort of spots we used in the first uh, regression, for instance, this one, the uh, the shapefile called other points. If we could create something, we could interpolate the values between the these red and blue and yellow dots. We might use the function extract values to point to actually get the interpolated values onto the ones now being dark red or wine red. I'll take away the other points because that was just a pedagogical kind of thingy. They are not needed at all for any of these analyses that we're going to do in, uh, at this stage. So first of all, in order to understand what we've got, to understand the difference between the inverse distance weighted Krieging and natural neighbors, just a very brief introduction to the Krieging would be uh, the he very helpful thing that we got in the help file. Um, when we are look, clicking into how Krieging works, it says something like the IDW, inverse distance weighted, and spline interpolation tools are referred to as deterministic interpolation methods because they are directly based on the surrounding measure values uh, or on specified mathematical formulations that determine the smoothness of the resulting surface. The second family of interpolation methods consist of geostatistical methods, such as Krieging, which are based on statistical models that include autocorrelation, that is, the statistical relationship among the measured points. Because of this, geostatistical techniques not only have the capacity of producing a prediction surface, but also to provide some measure of the certainty of, ac uh, of accuracy of the predictions. And that's kind of important here. The, so the Krieging is... is a, is, is a sort of interpolation technique where you statistically get a, a sort of a fit value to the uh, to the estimated to the to the interpolation. When it comes to the inverse distance weighted, however, you measure them using so sort of the distance from any from any of the points to the near points uh, from the points nearby. But the beauty of that one is that you could set a power, so you make it more or less um, affected by the distance. Uh, as, as in any decay parameter, if you like. That means that they, it's more suitable for predicting values. If you've got something and you have an outcome and you want to see what it could look like in 10 years or if something happened, a statistical model wouldn't be the best because they can only show what you get. But this one, more predictively in nature, could be used to sort of estimate the outcome if you did a change. And finally, we're also going to look into the natural neighbor, which is interesting from a completely different reason. It makes use of an interesting sort of technique where each of the dots, in this case from the regression, uh, are, have gotten, but they're not shown, but are get, sort of generated Voronoi Ortiz and polygons surrounding them. So the area uh, around each point that is closest to each point is sort of designated or owned by that point, if you like. and. If you want, if you got a raster with a very fine resolution for each of these cells in the resolution, it creates a new Voronoi polygon, uh, pretty much as the olive, uh, the the um, the brown here over the the green ones, and by the area percentage weights up the values from these points, and make a new value. So there are three completely different techniques for how you could sort of interpolate the values. Let's start with the inverse distance weighted. We, we enter the geographically weighted regression. We have the predicted value and we let the, the output raster be, but I want a cell size that makes sense. So I'm going to go for 100 meters. And in this case, I'm going to be fine with two as a power, but we're going to do it twice and we can see what happens if I reduce the value. And in this case, I'm just going to press okay. But remember number two here, 
and after a few moments of thinking the inverse distance weighted is going to produce something that looks like this and I'm going to take away the points so we could see it clearly and all these points by the way so we could see there's there's a variety of things going on and if I zoom in to the city we can in fact see that the the lighter colors the, these co the pink colors and brownish colors are indicative for areas we've got, got greater incomes and the greener ones for poor incomes and in fact these areas here and here uh, and here are known to be more poor than other areas uh, so it makes some kind of a sense to it but let's redo the model and I'm going to make it very clear that we are redoing the exact same model by returning to the results double clicking on that one uh, making sure that we change the name so I'll make it 2 and instead of a power of 2 I'm going to go for 0 0.5 and when I press OK and we take away this result section and you can see the results have changed quite dramatically now take a look when I toggle between these ones this is with 0 0.5 as a power and this is with 2 as a power this is an excellent tool because it allows us to predict the magnitude by sort of changing one attribute and seeing what would happen if the the objects that I'm studying are more fluent or more constrained or anything. So you could sort of change the uh, the space parameters in in the uh, interpolation techniques. So that will be two of the methods. Now, I'll get the points on again so we can see what we're dealing with and I'm going to go for the Kriegen. Now the Kriegen doesn't allow us to go for any sort of power values but it allows us of course to set the the uh, the Z value which is in case would be the predicted value. We've got the same size so I'm going for the 100 meters um, of, of the cell size. Now we have the opportunity to do this. I'm not going to interfere or change any of the major, of, of the main settings I'm going to use a spherical semi-variogram model, which is a way of, of testing the variability over sort of uh, repetitive or lagged space. And we have the same kind of uh, number of points and so many other things. So this, it's in fact similar to what we got in the uh, inverse distance weighted method. And I click OK. And we have to wait for a few moments. And eventually there we go. So the Kriegen results is just another technique and we can also look for the values seeing that they span between 6.6 .6 to 7.8 and 6.6 .6 to 7.9 so it's not from a value perspective very very different but from a distribution point of view let me see there's the as we see the Kriegen but now we see the inverse distance and now we see the inverse distance so we've got three relatively similar but still you could clearly see the uh, the, vari the variability between these. Now, in the final step, <coughs> let's go for the natural neighbor. Again, this was the one creating T's and polygons and making use of the nearest neighbor to actually produce what is likely to be the value in between. It's completely different thinking again. So three different techniques. And, and I'll let you think for a few moments. And there we go a very different value in this time. So we get something between oh, 1 and 9.5. I must in fact go back and make sure that I didn't do anything different in terms of setting. Yes I did and I'm sorry for that. This is what happened if I'm not paying attention too much. I'm going to do it with a predicted values instead. Sorry for that. And there we go. So let me see. There. So these are the results from the natural neighbor computations. We can compare them then to uh, the Kriegen, which is underneath, and to the inverse distance weighted, which is underneath. I can see certain similarities between the natural neighbor Near, and the inverse distance weighted. And of course these kinds of values again could be picked up by the, the other points or could be exported into a 3D visualization 
uh, and be used in other purposes. But these are just a few ways of how we could treat the regression material and interpolate new values that could be sort of reused in other purposes. So that will be all for this lesson. Thank you.